All right, so next let's look at the two most common heat transfer devices for ranking cycle cycles. Um, first, let's look at the boiler because it's a very important piece of equipment. This is where I bring the heat transfer into the system that makes this fluid hot and high pressure. It's got enough energy that I can actually get some really significant work out of the turbine. So usually what happens is my boiler is going to bring in a compressed liquid and then it's going to bring heat in, usually through a fire, and it's going to heat it to either a saturated vapor or a superheated vapor. Now most of the time, a saturated vapor is very, very easy to achieve because I just have this ongoing boiling and whatever comes off the top of the boiler is a saturated vapor. To superheat it, I just have to keep adding heat until all the liquid has uh, been evaporated and then continue to heat it a bit more. In either case, the kinetic and potential energy change is going to be very small. And the work is going to be non-existent. If you have no moving parts, you have no work. Now, the heat transfer for a boiler is clearly into the system, right? I'm putting a fire in there, essentially. So Q is going to be positive. And if I look at the first law, I end up with just the difference from the exit minus the enthalpy times the mass flow rate will give me Q. Now, a lot of times, one of the problems that I'll run into is I won't have enough uh, data given. In that case, one of the assumptions that we commonly make is that the pressure at the inlet and exit are nearly equal. I know whenever I have flow through a pipe, there is some pressure drop. But if you actually calculate the quantity of these pressure drops um, and then look at the data for those different states, you're going to find that it is just not worth the time. You're going to be less than 1% error. Actually, usually it's less than 0.1% error. I can calculate the entropy generated using the second law. When the heat transfer is isothermal, this is no problem. So in the case where I'm going from a saturated liquid to a saturated vapor, no problem. If that transition from the compressed liquid up to the saturated liquid and the transition from saturated vapor to superheated vapor that are difficult to calculate. But if all the heat transfer does occur isothermally, then I can use this formula here. So MESE minus MISI minus Q over T will get me the entropy generated. And usually it's a fairly trivial thing or it's so difficult that no one asks you to do it. If I want to look at a condenser, I'm going to find almost the same thing, except for the purpose is the opposite. So I'm going to start with a gas and I'm going to cool it in a cooling tower or something like that, something similar. I'm going to cool it to a saturated liquid. Okay? Now, this is almost always to a saturated liquid. I usually do not take this to a compressed liquid because it's not cost effective. Um, again, the way that I do this is I just let air flow over it until it finally condenses and then I draw the con condensate off and send it on to whatever other piece of equipment I want. The heat transfer is going to be out of the system, so Q is going to be negative. Otherwise, the formulas are exactly the same. The other assumptions are the same. So at this point, we're ready to start working ranking cycle problems, and that concludes our videos leading up to study of the ranking cycle.